Hi, everybody. It's Brent and Josh and Under, and uh, we are here for the first annual Spread the Plague Day. What's this thing? What is that? That's my... Um, what is that thing you have on your head? Is that hair? Yeah, it's hair. You don't know what that is. It's, you've long since forgotten that. Um, so, uh, welcome. We are, as Brent said, we're spreading the plague. So we're just gonna, you know, hang out on the porch here for an hour. I have wine because every good book club should have wine. And um, we're here wait, with you're, our- You're sitting on the cord. Oh. We're here on the porch. You can see it's a really pretty day. And Andrew is right there at our feet. Under, say hi. Hey, I don't think they can see her. Oh, you see my feet though. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and so I know a lot of you have already submitted questions and we're going to start answering questions. We've only got an hour, so we're gonna to try to get to as many questions as possible. Uh, Under may answer a few questions too, you can hear. Oh and wait, people can ask chat, the chat on the side. Yes, so you can submit your question via Facebook, or on Twitter, or right here um, to the side here, you see this column, you can submit a question that way. And you can ask about anything, uh, but uh, this is primarily for people who uh, have read the Bucolic Plague or are in the process of reading the Bucolic Plague and want to know uh, uh, the rest of the story. So, um, cause you know, so many people, um, have known us for so many different reasons. So some people knew us from reading the Bucolic Plague. Some people knew us from the Fabulous Beekman Boys. Some people uh, know us just from the Amazing Race. And uh, even more people know us just as those two guys on the Time Warner Cable commercial. Uh, That's right. <laughs> and so, you know, they don't know the whole story. So we're here to answer your questions and just chat for the next hour. So, okay, so do we have questions? We do. We have some questions. I'm going to man the questions, and Josh is going to uh, maybe he'll provide the answers because he's wittier than I am. Well, it's my book. Yes, yeah, true. Okay, let's see. Where's. Okay, so did you put the link on Facebook? Uh, it's coming on Facebook soon. Okay, so first question. Okay. Robin Jerzak asked, when you were living and working apart, it was clear that it was tough on your relationship. Wasn't it also tough when you began living together and being together almost constantly? Because he's wittier than I am. Most couples experience difficulties with such a huge change. So. Wait, read it again. Okay. Well, the people out there don't want to hear it again. Well, I, you got to pay attention. I'm not paying attention. When you were living and working apart, it was clear that it was tough on your relationship. Well, wasn't it also tough when you began living together and being together almost constantly? I mean, what's not to love? Most couples experience difficulties with such a huge change. Um, what's, let's see. Was it difficult when we started? Well, you know what? We are always so busy that... Like every day is a, a wholly different day. So like when, when I first moved up here, it was right after we ran the amazing race. So that was in December, 2012. And then I came up in January. So there was still so much going on, you know, it was Christmas, which is so busy for us. And so we were just really busy at that time. So I guess it was, it helped to have all hands on deck. And but, I, but in general, how do we get along when we're 24 seven? We fight all the time. Yeah, people know from you know watching the Fabulous Speakman Boys that uh, we bicker from time to time, and uh, that is really we just call that our communication style. You know, we we are not one of those couples who let things you know bottle up and fester. Um, we just when it comes across our head, we get it out there, and then we deal with it. And even if there's a moment, you know, a moment or two of tension. You know, we, we get over pretty quickly because we're adults. It's really when you let things fester that that, you know. Yeah, but we're not, we're still not great about it. I was watching, does anybody watch that show Vicious on PBS with the two old, the two old gay guys? It's a British show. You're, I was watching you're it. You're like that? You're like, I was me. like, that is our future right there. Not my future. We, have, we should be better at fighting. I mean, we're very good. We fight very well. We should be. You're saying we should be wittier? We should be more vicious. We should we should either be funnier <laughs> and more vicious, or we should get a better fun, better way to. But but also to your question, we are together 
literally 24 seven. Um, and, but there's so much to do. So for instance, we both got up around uh, five o'clock this morning uh, to work out on the farm. And there's so many different chores to do that we literally did not see each other or talk to one another until about 15 minutes before this book club started because yeah. you know we're we, we just did stuff we divide parts of we the divide and conquer and uh when you're living and working together 24 7 dividing is very important okay why can people I, can whoever's watching can you like type something in that group chat thing yeah we don't know if that's I working see, or not I want to so. see somebody there why does this go, why is this happening okay um I'm going to type right now questions. Should I? Go and then somebody, the next somebody respond question? to me. Wait. No, because like, you know I can't do two things at once. Okay, shut up. Okay, so on the side, there's something that says group chat. So, you know, let's chat <laughs> <laughs> as a group. Oh, okay. So, next question What do you do when you need to play hooky from the constant work and worry of the farm and business? What do we do when we need to play hooky? Yes. From the constant worry of the farm. Um, uh, we don't really, I mean, we, we really the do. The farm is our escape, really. Yeah, we, we love working in the gardens, and we actually love working at the mercantile, too. I mean, the only thing I really need to play hooky from is work. Like, I mean, we're super fortunate. The business is growing and there's always something happening and we have new projects all the time and we're going into the city for meetings or we're flying here or there. And then, so my escape from that is working in the garden. So, I mean, the farm is still our escape. I don't think, I don't know, maybe at some point the farm will will um, be a chore, okay, but I'm gonna I don't give think you, so. I'm going to also give you the truth, which Josh is not telling you when he is not working or needs to take a break like if he's working on a label design or or you know we're writing something um his break is video games on his iphone and um that's true and uh, let me tell you guys that drives me nuts particularly I know it does particularly if we have a product and a deadline and i'm trying to do something and i see him playing a video game that drives me nuts but that's how he relaxes and blows off steam. So, you know what? The, the Google chat doesn't seem to be working, but on Facebook, people are commenting. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So it's just a mind. Yeah. And uh, Denise, uh, who is one of Wait, our- Wait, Denise, Denise. Denise is one of our employees at the Mercantile. Wait, shouldn't you be waiting on somebody? Do well, we, do we have Mercantile's no customers? getting ready to close for today. Oh, yeah. But uh, Denise at the Mercantile says, somebody, some nice ladies dropped off a ton of vodka for us. Oh, really? And I should say, that uh who, who dropped up this is an exciting project so a lot First of, of all nice ladies do not drop off vodka so <laughs> i don't know if, it's her business you know. yeah it's her business they are based in um uh in utica and okay. uh they're making um vodka all from local grown grain and corn see we're and, actually supporting local farms and we are in the talks to do i'm gonna support local farms until i black out we're going to do potentially a um, a vodka together. A mortgage lift, a mortgage lifter vodka. Um, uh, so we gotta we gotta. Well, Denise, we might taste it. They're, they're make sure that the the vodka doesn't disappear. Whenever people drop stuff off at the at the mercantile, especially baked goods, they disappear. I'm assuming yeah, the vodka might I wanna, be safe. I want to bottle count, Denise. <laughs> Okay, okay, who else so, is on? Okay, so um, let's answer one. And I'm going to try to switch back between Facebook questions and YouTube questions and Twitter questions so that we're trying to cover everybody. I'm not. I'm probably just going to sit here. Um, well, Nicole says we both look great. So wow. thanks, Nicole. Um, let's see. More me. Okay. Oh, Denise says she was dusting. Okay. Um, okay, Susan Littlefield, our friend Susan mm -hmm. uh, from Farm Broadcaster Association, says, what has been your biggest challenge and biggest triumph so far? Um, um, you want to go first? Biggest challenge and biggest triumph. And this is post bucolic plague, I guess. Biggest challenge and biggest triumph. Um, well, honestly, like the biggest challenge is, it's a, it's really for me, it's it's the business. You know, I grew up, or you know, as an adult, I had a job, I had a paycheck. It was always someone else's problem to make sure that there was money to pay a paycheck. Um, and now, you know, owning our own business, it's really obviously up to us whether or not we 
make money and whether or not we can play, pay our employees. And so uh, that's the kind of thing that stresses me out. I'm well, like, I think we can pay Denise in vodka. Yeah, well, yeah, Denise, if, if your paycheck bounces this week, just take a bottle of vodka. <laughs> um, but no, having that stress of, as a business grows, having all these, um, not just ourselves, but everything comes down to Beekman and whether or not um, that's successful enough to continue and pay for the farm and keep Farmer John going and, and you know, buy his milk and, and pay for the employees. So, I mean, that's the biggest challenge to me was really to get used to being solely self-employed. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of people, um, you know, who um, came into our story from the Fabulous Speakman Boys, I mean, obviously they know that we were struggling and, and whatnot. Um, and I think people don't realize that, you know, we lived apart for five years. And um, when we ran The Amazing Race, we put an, an incredible amount of pressure on ourselves to try to win the race because, you know, without the amazing race, we would not have been able to pay off the mortgage on the farm and Josh would not have been able to move here full time. You would probably still be, in, we'd probably still be living apart, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we wouldn't have moved full time. Yeah. I have a really important question for everybody if they could answer. Should I just do a little bit of work here? What do you think? I'm, I'm noticing, I'm looking at myself. I, no, you look distinguished. I think one of those I left things. Maybe an eye left, and then a little bit here. No. Is that, how's that? You just need to use some Beekman goat milk lotion on your forehead. Oh, wait. Okay. So, cover up one side of my face, Brent. I want people to judge. So it does look better like that. I know you have more wrinkles that way. Or like that. Oh, this way. Okay. Let's see. Um. Okay, next question. Oh, you want, Susan, Susan also wanted to know what our biggest triumph oh, was. Biggest the biggest triumph for me is Mortgage Lifter. Um, and Susan, you're a part of that, so thank you. Um, there's, I mean, there's no better feeling than to be able to, you know, give back money to, to people. And um, so, so far we've given away over $40,000. I'm going to be super happy when we're able, to, when we give away in total over a million dollars because you know that was that was our amazing race prize, and um, well, actually, it's four, when we give away four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, which was left after taxes, um, but when we give that away, I'll be like, oh, the amazing race actually became bigger than that one moment. So we will because of the amazing race, we will have been able to give away more money to farms than we actually won in the amazing race. That'll be my biggest triumph. Okay. Um, oh, I love I love this question, okay. um, Kathy Shantz says who is your most interesting neighbor and I mean obviously we call all of you guys our neighbors um, and you know everybody who ever talks to us our neighbors neighbors are very important to Beekman but um, let's for the sake of narrowing it down why don't we just talk about our like closest neighbors so on this side of the farm over here um, are Phyllis and Paul Van Amberg they are the, the farm property that abuts our farm. And uh, if any of you watched the Beekman Boys Wedding Special, the beautiful little blonde haired child uh, that looked like she was from Central Casting. Central Casting Farm Kid. That, That's that was them. one of their, their so, six children, right? They're amazing. They've won like international recognition of, of um, keeping grass, uh, pasture land uh, and, and raising grass fed beef. So we get our beef from there. They're really wonderful and they have six kids and when we first and they uh had lived in the city for a while too in, in brooklyn and then they bought their farm right around the time that we bought our farm and um and i just love this story because it, it's about passion and commitment to what you believe in because for they they bought their farm on on kind of a reverse mortgage um and well we don't we don't need to give away all the well, details okay. but, but okay, they, when that, they when they bought the farm they had there was a single wide trailer that they lived in and then they had six kids so they were starting this farm a grass-fed beef farm with I don't, is it six kids i forget how many children i, think I should know five or six they're That's all beautiful but all in there in the single wide trailer but they finally got a house this year they, they finally, finally did find the and they home educate all the kids and they're on the, the most beautiful smartest yeah, most intelligent smart. kids but they, so they raise amazing grass-fed beef and that, and so we buy half a cow from them every year that's on that side and then on this way over over well you can't see past the bar our great young couple called michael and jen um how do you say the last name is it quidice judice it's not judice i think uh judice 
I don't know. But anyway, so it's one of those really hard names. But they're very the same young name couple. as that, that New Jersey housewife. No, it's which different. Is, oh, it's it is? spelled the same, but it's pronounced differently. Well, I know, but, but I don't know how to pronounce her name either. So they're a great young couple. Um, they're in their early thirties, um, entrepreneurs. Um, the wife owns a successful um, dog, dog. Uh, grooming, babysitting, boarding in business Albany. in Albany, and they just bought the neighboring farm to us to open up. Uh, an a, and, a hard apple cider And he orchard. is so passionate about apples and wild apples. He and planted crazy. 300 apple trees this year. Uh, and, and they're all kind of wild and old varieties. And, and, and anyway, we, it's going to be amazing. And we've got such a bumper crop of apples this year that he is actually going to take some of our apples to make a batch of um, hard apple cider because his apples won't be ready for a few years. How great is that? I don't even have to pick apples this year. We're actually, I, not only do I not have to pick apples, but... He's going to come pick them and then come back with hard cider. And if any of you guys... That's the kind of farming I like. So if any of you guys are um, coming to Harvest Festival, we're going to try to have um, him on the farm uh, during the farm tour so he could talk about how apple cider is made and probably do some taste testings. And um, then if any of you um, live nearby and you're watching, next... Uh, is it next? No. Uh, August 22nd, is uh, Onder is sponsoring her first event in Sharon Springs, and it's called uh, the Dog Days of Summer. Uh, and so she's inviting any dog lover. Um, if you have a, a friendly dog who likes to play around with other dogs, we're all gathering in the town park, uh, right in the middle of heart of Sharon Springs. We have dog dog and Jen's baths business. And dog, yeah. Jen's business from right next door. They're going to be giving free. Um, dog baths using all natural beauty uh, all natural dog care products there's going to be a doggy masseuse there and um our, our employee megan who many of you know and she's a um she's gonna make dog biscuits she's gonna make all natural dog biscuits so it's why are you be talking so much this is my book this uh, is well, my I, book this is my I, book club they asked about our neighbors i know oh one other question about paul and phyllis or one other thing about paul and phyllis is uh because i don't remember if this was in the book or not i don't think so no um Paul was the person who told us that we should use the base of oh, our yeah, the old si silo. The silo to, to keep pigs. So that's, that's our pig pen. So people watch the show, remember the first um, uh, Porky and Bess, and he was the one that said, the silo is perfect for pigs because I can't burrow under it, and it was. It was very good for pigs. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, okay, Marcia Siminski yeah. uh, is asking, does Mary still exist? Does Mary, no, does Mary still visit? I'll oh, still visit. Um, N not as much. Well, for those who uh, wait, don't know, tell, tell people who I'm going to tell who Mary is. Um, so Mary is a little ghost girl that lives in our house, um, and she was spotted by a, a ghost, a local ghost hunter. Not spotted, but felt by a local ghost hunter. And um, the ghost hunter said, "There's this little girl. She wears a bonnet. She walks on her tiptoes, and she stands in the doorways uh, of the house, and she points and laughs at Brent and I. I suspect she's mostly laughing at Brent because, well, because." Um, but so she thinks that we are her invisible friends, this little girl. So we asked the ghost hunter, we said, well, what's, you know, what's the girl's name? And, uh, she said, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think it starts with an M. Well, totally unrelated. Another person had, uh, one of the contractors had, had pointed out the, that there was the name Mary carved in the floor in our front hallway. So that's when we, we sort of put to get two and two together and said, oh, well, this little girl, uh, so whose name starts with M. We're going to call her Mary because that's the name on the floor. And does she still visit? Um, we have not heard her in a long time. There's a lot of ghosts in the house. People, uh, but when guests come, when guests come, they um, that's when the activity really gets um, hopping again. I think that we've been here so long now that most of the guests just sort of, or most of the ghosts are just like, uh, whatever, they're boring. But so they, when Josh's mom was visiting uh, most recently with her friend Rima, we had more activity. You know what I wanted to ask you is the ducks in the upstairs hallway, mm -hmm. that circle of ducks. Are you tipping those over? I think under hits those with their tail. But they're tipped. They're not knocked over. They're sitting on Well, them. I think it just depends on how. Because she's gentle, but she sometimes bumps into them. But for uh, here's a behind-the-scenes Beekman tip. Uh, for many of you know, when we first started our website, which was... Um, you know, right after the book came out, but even before the TV show came out, we used to have a blog called um, Mary Beekman, and it was a, a blog that was written from the perspective of this four-year-old ghost in her really, diary. It was really a great little blog, and it would it would go it was seasonal, so it was like uh, it was written from this little perspective of this little girl in 1802 and what was going on, and it was like what was Valentine's Day like then, what was Christmas like then, um, what you know. 
President's Day, Fourth of July. Um, so it was it was a great historical look at what was happening in 1802, what would have been happening in this house in 1802, um, and it was written through the eyes of this you know four to six year old girl. And most people don't know this, but that was actually written by my mom. Yes, um, she she wrote she's a great writer, entry. Jackie. Many of you know Jackie. Yeah. Oh, and she's taking a, a break from Facebook for this month, but she'll be back next month. We've got so many emails. I know. What's happening with Jackie? Yeah. But she'll be back next Where's month. Where's your mom? Where's your but mom? if any of you want to, while you, if you're missing Jackie, uh, you can go to beekman 1802com and in the search bar at the top, just type in Mary Beekman, and you can read all of those old. Uh, ghost girl blogs so and they're really fun you will learn a ton and for those of you who are just joining um, you can either ask a question right um, to the left on YouTube where you're watching this video or you can submit them on Facebook or Twitter we're going to be bouncing back and forth between uh, all three of them you know trying to make sure we get all of your questions answered I really do think I need to have a little work done Brooke Ratliff says look at, look Mary's how much better this size is. No, you look I never, Everybody doesn't. Josh, you want to know something? Doesn't Josh look no, great? No, you want to know why I'm doing this? I I never look at myself in the mirror, ever, ever, you know ever. Josh is getting Josh is getting very sensitive this about is the his first, age. Lately. I know this is the first time, but this is the first time I've seen myself because what happens? So I take a shower in the bathroom, and the in the mirror fogs up, and then I'm out of the bathroom by the time the mirror fogs. I really haven't seen myself. I in a, I posted in a, a long time. I took this great picture of Josh old. yesterday, and I posted it on Instagram. And Josh doesn't look at Instagram too much. So this morning I said, oh, did you see this great picture I took of you yesterday? And he said, oh, does it make me look old? So he, everybody, he's very sensitive about looking old lately. Damn, what is um, so if you can go off stroke his ego a little bit, that'd be great. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, the questions are coming in. Okay. Uh, There's a lot of questions. We should be answering questions. This I is know. not all about you, Brent. Uh, somebody said you looked great. Oh, thank you. I should have a little, oh, this is a, this is a good question. Um, so Eileen Harcourt says, do you miss New York City, the ease of delivery, getting things delivered to your door? No. That type of thing. Do you want to know what's easy and easier, even easier than delivery is walking out to the garden or the chickens and grabbing an egg and bringing it back inside or vegetables or whatever we have. And in the winter, that's what I was doing all afternoon. Today I was blanching green beans. Um, going down to the basement and, and, and getting our food from the freezer. So I really don't miss anything about New York City. I don't. I really don't. No. I mean, well, I mean we, as, we have to go. We have to go down to the city maybe once a month. You we know, were just there a, this past week. A, a so we're there. Or something. And honestly, you actually appreciate, we appreciate the city more now that we live out of it than we ever did when we lived in it. Because when you live in it, you're just, you know, you're working, you know, trying to pay your rent, and uh, I will like the city again. Now you really appreciate when, things when I you retire. Down. Like I, you know, the the time I would I wouldn't move back to the city for good, but when when I was when we weren't so crazy all the time and we could go to museums and just walk around the streets and things, then I would move back to the to the city and have a place again. But right now it's much happier here. Okay, Sally Kinvin says. Um, how do you plan to stay folksy, um, i.e. avoid being identified as a mega corporation but still spread the goodness throughout the world? Well, we have a 27-point plan of how to stay <laughs> folksy. Just kidding. By doing things like this. <laughs> um, uh, I love that word, folksy. We are folksy. Are we folksy? I think so. Um, uh, and to avoid becoming identified as a mega corporation, I, you know, I, that's that's a really smart question. It's something we do think about. Like I said earlier, we're so fortunate. We're so happy that our company is growing. Um, we've we've still yet to take a paycheck uh, for ourselves. We've put everything right back into the company, but we've grown. We have, I don't know how many employees, our full-time employees uh, all have health insurance. Um, and so I I don't know. I mean, we've, we've figured it out every step of the way. When we're a mega corporation, how will we stay folksy? Or I think you're too old to ever become a mega corporation. Do you think so? Yeah. I don't, I, 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 it'd be nice to maybe try being a mega corporation at some point. Really? Well. Well, honestly, if we ever became a mega corporation, it would be because we have other people who were mega in us for us. We'll always be right here sitting on the porch, probably. 
Okay. Yeah, we do. Uh, that's the other thing we get asked a lot. Like, who who does your social media? Um, oh, this weekend we were in a in a meeting in a business partner meeting, and the person asked. They asked how many Facebook friends, the followers we had, and we said, "Oh, we have one hundred thirty thousand followers." And they said, "Well," how, and they said, "How many of those are purchased?" And I thought that was really, <laughs> really funny. I'm like, I wouldn't know how to buy a, a Facebook follower. So, I actually, if anybody, if if you are for, available for sale on Facebook, just let us know how much you would be, and maybe what we would get for the money. <laughs> I don't think we could afford. Be them. Interesting. They're, I don't. They're yeah. such good neighbors. Yeah. Um, oh, speaking of neighbors, one of our very own neighbors. Um, Nancy Fowl, Nancy. who, uh, if you guys don't know Nancy, Nancy what are you doing? Uh, what is she is, uh, she wrote this amazing little book that just came out a couple months ago about the history of Sharon Springs and uh, more specifically diversity and how diversity has shaped Sharon Springs. So going back from the native Americans, when the, the tribes of the Iroquois, um, uh, used to meet here in this area with the waters into the, uh, hops, you know, hops farming local farming, migrant farming, um, spa visitors, New York City visitors to the spa, the, the immigrants that worked in the spa. And then of course the last Sharon era, Springs, which is the era of the gays. The LG, yeah, LGBT. Um, Sharon Springs has- we call, it the, we call it the fabulous era. The fabulous, yeah. The Pleistocene, like the fabulous scene. But anyway, she just wrote this great little book and uh, if you're coming to Harvest Festival, she'll, she'll probably be, be yeah, signing she'll be, it. She's gonna be signing. Um, but yeah. it is, people ask like, what's so great about Sharon Springs? What does Sharon Springs that ha have that nothing else has? It has a, uh, you know, 500 year history, you know, back to Native Americans, history of diversity um, and, and wild diversity. Like not just like one immigrant group and another immigrant group. It's like a lot of diversity. And if anybody, doesn't believe that diversity makes a big difference in in corporations and in communities sharon springs you know is the proof of that oh so okay nicole uh, forrest uh who uh has actually been to quite a few harvest festivals we love nicole uh, yeah nicole's great um she asked are you considering writing another memoir to get uh, from bucolic plague to the current uh time period or are you guys going to be more focused on the social media and other digital type stuff um, we get that question a lot. Um, well, I think Josh should write another memoir because we are kind of old fashioned, both in our way of thinking and of course, in what we do with Beekman 1802. And we think that there is something amazing about having a book in your hand. Um, and so I, I would like to write another book. I really would. Um, you have been taking notes for a long time. I know I have a lot of notes. I just need. I really need like a month, two months um, away, like in seclusion to sort of figure out what the book is going to be. For some reason, I'm not myself these days. I knew what the ending was, you know, it was already, um, you know, already passed. So I, I knew what the ending was. So that book, I knew what the book was before I started writing. We call it Plague. It sort of had a beginning and an ending, buying the farm and then you know losing our jobs in the in the big recession. So that had a beginning, beginning and an ending. I, I don't have an ending. Maybe that's what it is. I have to have an ending to a book before I can start writing. Can I rat you out a little bit? What? I don't know. <laughs> when we first uh, scheduled the, uh, this first annual international spread the plague day, um, one what we were going to do what was I don't, Josh, I don't even know this. Yeah, Josh, it was your idea. Yeah, you were going to write the first chapter of the next memoir, and that was going to be unveiled. I just said that in It was passing. going to be unveiled on International Spread the Plague Day. Um, we don't have. I that. don't remember that all. This was something it. in your magical thinking no, mind that you wanted no. to happen, mm -mm. You but you got tired it. of bringing it up, and I didn't do it. So no, you said. It. So if any of you, so help Josh out. What would you like? The next memoir to be about because obviously there are too many stories that we could tell uh, between when bucolic plague ended. When it's we so were, weird. When I we mean, were between, almost about to lose the farm. I mean, between starting the company to you know the first TV show to the amazing race to you know growing the company, it's just there's it's too. Honestly, if it were fiction, people wouldn't believe it. So. so let's take kind of an informal poll. So if you're watching on YouTube, right to the right, you can see where it says. Uh, it, write a question or maybe it's below us now i don't know but you tell us uh what you would like the next memoir to be about and we'll see if it gives josh any inspiration how about that that's fair okay or if you want to write my next memoir feel free you can send it to me 
<laughs> and then I'm just done. Okay. Where where are you on are you on YouTube? Are there questions? Uh, now I'm okay. switching back to Facebook. Okay. To get the questions from there. Gotta be fair to everybody. Um, Facebook now has this thing where you can do instant live video. I know we might do if that. If you're a celebrity time. and Facebook said we're a verified celebrity. Oh, I wonder how that happened. Also, Terry Burns said, would love to hear about the Sharon Springs folks, old, new, quirky, solid, fabulous in the new memory. Oh, okay. So, was there anything else on that? No, no that's fine. Okay. Just um, this, this is the other thing. I'd love to write, not just another memoir about us, but I'd love to write a fictional um, series of books that takes place in Sharon Springs. Oh, like because, a year in Provence, but a yeah, year in Sharon yeah, Springs? Yeah, because we do have such a great cast of characters who I, of course, would completely change their names and everything about them. Um, they would be thinly veiled, I think. Yes. Uh, but it, it is such an amazing little place. I'd like to do a sweet little bunch of stories about it. Sort of like, Collection of short sort stories. Sort of like James Harriet type stuff, because that's what the town is about, but quirkier. I always said I wanted to do like a Christmas village of Sharon Springs. You know, those little things that go on the mantle, um, you know, all the little houses. That's what Sharon Springs looks like. But if you look closer, There'll be things like boarded up windows and people who don't wear pants when they mow the lawn and, and things like that. So it looks really picturesque and quaint on the, on the surface, but when you dig underneath, it's really, really eccentric. And we, you know, uh, and wonderful. You know, I, it's it's kind of a it puts us in a tricky situation sometimes about um, the village and like what has happened to Sharon Springs since we've been here, um, only because we have been the most visible uh, people in our in our little village for the past couple of years. And because we still only have a population of 540 something, 47. And, um, you know, people always say, Oh, look what you've done to Sharon Springs. And it's, oh, it could not be yeah. further from the truth. Yeah, people, oh, this it, is, don't, don't ever say this to us. Don't, uh, well, I mean, you can because it's a nice we'll thing to correct say. you. We'll but, correct you. You know, people are like, Oh, you guys put Sharon Springs on the map. And that is so not true. Um, you know, it takes a village to make a village. The reason we came to Sharon Springs was when we, you know, as you read the book, when we stumbled on it, we thought it was the most fascinating place in the world. That's because there were already fascinating and wonderful people here. For whatever reason, we've been able to shine a spotlight on it a little brighter than before. But, but what put the village on the map was here long before us. And all the people working together, you know, Harvest Festival and, you know, all these things. It, it's not us. It's, it's the magic of the place and it's about the community working together and, you know, you know getting the, the high school kids to help pick up trash after the festival and help with the porta potties. And, uh, you know, how many other high school kids do you know where they will help their community with the porta potties? You know, it, it, not many. And Sharon Springs is just that type of place. And uh, uh, we're just all really working hard, working together to try to make it last for the next 200 years. Instead of 150. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, the question coming in too fast. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me go back to some here. Well, well, I'm going back there. Find some. So fast, so I well, I just find okay, one. Well, I don't want to skip well, any. If you wouldn't talk so much, we can okay. get more done. Um, let's see. Also, Dark Hollow Farm said, Josh writes so well, and his way of writing is so entertaining and honest that I'd enjoy even a day-to-day -day stories of your farm days in life. Okay, that's, I like that idea. That, in this, when somebody else earlier asked about what, you know, what, what if we get become a mega corporation or whatever, the one thing that we could really do is, or really use is grow a little bit more so we could have a little bit more help with the business stuff so that we could do more uh, writing, you know, more creative stuff. I, you know, I know we've dropped off on some recipes on the site. We, you know, we haven't been able to update as much stuff because we've been growing so fast that we've had to pay a lot of attention to the business side of things, which is not my strong suit. Um, but yes, I would love to actually just do more writing. And one of the things that I want to do, um, you know, once we kind of get settled more, you is, can always do whatever you want to do. You no, know, um, is to do a daily YouTube live stream just like this, so that we would like every morning at eight thirty Eastern, there would be like ten to fifteen minutes of from Beekman Farm. So we would talk about either funny things that we've heard about or you know interesting news things that we're concerned about or 
what's happening on the farm that day, uh, just kind of like a, a good news. So start your day with good news because most of the time now, if you're a person who watches the news, it's terrible. Like it's either really bad uh, news, you know, people are getting murdered or something, or, or it's, it's very sensationalistic and tabloidy, or it's about Kim Kardashian. Um, so we just think people, you know, could start every morning. We'll have our coffee with us. That's not to say farm. we wouldn't talk about Kim Kardashian because yeah. it might come up. Just if Kim naturally. came to the farm, we'd talk about her. But right? We would certainly talk about her if she came to the farm. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we would love to do in the new year is to try to get Kim Kardashian to the farm. You know, figure out a way to do, uh, you know, because we did some of those YouTube videos minute in the morning. Um, which were just kind of shots of yes, nature. Yes, I know, and I love to. I know, I, we just don't it's have so the time hard to, to do it. It's, it's hard to do, but um, so that's Could one of the things we'd love to do. Somebody just come and run the business for us. That would be <laughs> <great>. <laughs> anyway. Okay, let's see. Um, several people have just have talked about you know encouraging writing the memoir. Oh, Melissa, thank you. You said I don't need a lift, tuck, or injection, but I think you're just being. Oh, polite. Denise. Denise wanted to let you know that there are customers in the mercantile, and as soon as she's finished with them, they're going to post their questions on here because they're she's got it streaming live at the oh, mercantile. Oh, at the mercantile. Um, so we're live here and down the street. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jessica we, Nguyen, um, who's also been oh, to, to uh, Harvest Festival many times. Um, she says I she cannot wait to be back in Sharon Springs for Harvest Festival. This is going to be my fifth Harvest Festival. Yes, so I, I, most people that are watching are probably going to come to the Harvest Festival, right? You're going to come? Well, what, no, what there are people September, from South not, Dakota. September, and yeah, no, they can come. Yeah, It's not, you know, it's not just closed invitation. Yeah. Um, so September 19th and 20th this year, come to the Harvest Festival. We're going to have our, our new book will be here, our style book um, will be launching. And, and then all the other cool stuff that we do at Harvest Festival. And Jessica is one of our favorite people because she kind of uh, grew along with us mm -hmm. uh, in that, you know, when we first started the farm, she had never really gardened or anything like that. Um, but now she gardens and she grows some amazing things and she posts on her Facebook page the things that she grows. And we're always so proud uh, of that. And um, because we always, well, a lot of times, uh, just because of the the type of business we run and the type of products that we uh, we create and you know our life on the farm and gardening and whatnot, people always want to say, "Oh, well, you're just the you know the next Martha Stewart's." And we say, "No, we're, obviously we love Martha, um, and but we say we are definitely not the next Martha Stewart's because Martha, Martha as she knows says herself, already. she yes, she um, she She's is a teacher." A teacher. And we're and, learners, and we we are not we don't we're not know it alls. Oh, you know what I just but, said. But we are constant learners, and we just want everybody who comes into Beekman World to learn along with us, and that's why we're always sharing our own stupidity and all the mistakes um, we make. And like this week when I posted, oh, people were asking us. I posted on Facebook this week about being in a meeting in my and oh, that was Josh. So a lot of me. people were asking my, my under. Let me yeah, tell the story. Tell the story. So I was sitting in a meeting. And I looked down and my underwear from the day before was coming out the bottom of my pant leg because I was wearing the same pants as the day before, but, and the underwear got stuffed in the leg. So I did this thing where you know, I'm every, who hasn't done this? You're lying. If you say you haven't, I have not done this. I like, I reached down as if to scratch my ankle, you know, and pulled his underwear, pulled my underwear out pants. and put it in my back pocket and nobody saw. But here's what's funny. I didn't, I didn't tell you this. You saw? Well, no, I didn't see you do that. But when we were walking to the meeting, I saw something at the cup of well, your why pant. Why would you not tell me? But I, well, because your underwear was gray that day, and I just thought that the cup of your pant was somehow oddly turned up, and so it just oh under, uh, under is warming my feet now. You can see. I don't know if you can see, but that's under. 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 Look. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. hi. I don't know if I see or not, <laughs> but the um, uh, I saw them and, and not it wasn't until so you, you posted anything. that. Then I'm you like, realized oh, that was his underwear. Thanks, Brent. All right, so um, we, wait, we, I want to. I, I saw something else. So people often also see you looked at yourself and you made you did duck face. Um, Kim Kardashian face. You did duck face. Um, people also ask like, how, like, what kind of help we have on the farm, and and we don't have any help. It's just John. Um, I take that back. It's John, the two of us. In the spring, John has interns. And then um, this year we we wound up 
uh, hiring one of our local high school kids, Tanner, who's great for one oh, day, he's one day a week. Amazing. But we still, but we do all put up all our food this, ourselves. And I just noticed in the window, Brent, do you see in the window? Right there. Oh yeah, there's our bushel basket. There's a bushel basket. That's what I was doing all afternoon. I had two of these bushel baskets full of green beans. So I was um, blanching and freezing. Top and tailing and blanching and freezing. Okay. Mm. Under, under's here. Oh, there's under. under. Say hi. Under. There's under. Under. Under is resting up for, you know, dog days of August, summer. August 22nd. Okay, let's see. Uh, Karen Mc, uh, McClellan asks, are all of your artisans local to Sharon Springs? And um, so, uh, as a lot of you guys know, um, we started our company really working with, what is this happening here? Under. Look, Under has never been on the furniture before. She knows she's not supposed to be up on the furniture. She knows, she knows you can't <laughs> tell her no. She knows I'm going to yell at her in front of all the world who's watching Hey, Under. This. Under. Under. What's going on? You should probably get down. What's going on? What's going on? Down. Under. Let's get down. Down. <laughs> down. <laughs> oh, see, she's sneaky. But anyway, so, um, you know, we, uh, we started our company working with the artists in the community because we, um, you know, we had lost our jobs. We were trying to make a living and we wanted as many other people in our little community to you know, make a living too. So that's how we started working with the local artists. And for like the first about three years of the company, um, everything, every single thing that we sold in our mercantile was made within a 20 mile radius of the farm. And then as we kept growing, um, we started getting submissions, you know, and ideas from people, you know, outside of that 20 mile radius. And um, so then we spread to other parts of New York State. And now we work with artisans. Still, I would say about probably 60 percent of the artisans are still within a two hour drive yeah. of Sharon Springs. But if you, um, but but if we you, work with people if all you look on our website, you'll you'll see every item has a little stamp at the bottom of its listing. If, if you shop on our site, it says uh, it's either. Uh, locally made, made in the U.S., um, or globally conscious. Because yeah, after we ran the Amazing Race, and people know that we also work a lot with um, our schools in Africa and other charity things globally, we realize that we are part of a global community. So we also work with artisans and people around the world too. So mm -hmm. that's it. That's the answer to that question. All right. If you if you've got your question and you're just joining in, you can type your question into the YouTube. Um, comment section and we're going to try to answer as many as we can get through we've got um, 17 minutes left in the first annual international spread the plague day so i um, need someone to tell me what kind of work i need done no people just have someone. said do not do no, the work god they're just being polite don't, people have don't said. be polite it's like it's semi-anonymous the, the public has spoken and then these look at these lines look at that. that's terrible stop it tell people uh what the the person who was cutting your hair the other day said. <laughs> I was getting my hair cut in, uh, in New York and a uh, nice Russian woman, but she didn't speak much English. And she was cutting the side of my hair and she's like, she's like more gray when short. It's true. It's very gray. And, uh, I, had a, I, had I a, tried to get her just to cut the gray ones, but. I had a gray chest hair the other day. Wait, wait. Okay, let's see. Scrolling through the questions. Mm. If I, I'll go in. Go in. We'll find another. I one. know. I know. We'll keep you talking. should be doing this while while I'm answering questions. Okay. You should be okay. finding Ted, the next one. Ted Wiga, uh, or Wiga, um, says, "What is your favorite memory from the book, from the bucolic plague?" This is a good question since it's International Spread the Plague Day. A favorite memory from the book. Well, I mean, the one that people bring up the most often, so now it's probably the strongest, is the first chapter, driving the goats down to that's everyone's favorite the Martha story. show when they when they pooped all over the back seat. So that's the one that has become the strongest memory. That's the thing about writing memoirs that um, people don't realize. It's like the, the more a story comes up, the more it becomes my memory, too. Um, so that's that's one of the most popular. I also eating the tomato in the garden for my birthday is a big thing. Um, in my biggest, do you remember? Could you remember cutting down the Christmas tree? Oh yeah, when you didn't wear appropriate clothing, mm -hmm. which you still don't wear appropriate yeah. clothing in the winter. My my biggest memory was you writing about 
me breaking down in the garden. Oh, and crying. Yeah, because for me, and I think anyone out there who has ever lost your job know, you know, knows this feeling. And for me, uh, maybe in particular, I don't know, um, you know, I was always such a studious kind of overachieving person, you know. Really, and, Brent? Mm, Surprising. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, to have everything that you had worked for uh, to that point in your life just kind of pulled out from under you or taken away from you, um, it was so devastating to me psychologically. And, uh, and I'm not a person who cries very often at all. I mean, how many times have you actually seen me cry? Maybe that three time or four times when yeah. the cat died. Yeah, and uh, so that I, I remember that moment very clearly. Okay, hold this. I'm gonna. We're gonna do a little commercial break because the light is really pretty right now. So we just want to see. Have you see the garden? Let's see, isn't it really? It's really pretty. The sunsets are here are spectacular. Not it's not sunset yet, but it, shortly. Okay, we've only got See 14. the garden? Brent has done such a great job in the flower garden this year. See all the colors? We've got 14 minutes left, so get your questions in. Okay, I'm going now to... Under. Look at under resting. She's resting. She got a bath today, which is the only reason she's up on the porch furniture. Um, okay, so... Um, let's see, next question. Uh, so, Jessly Hammer. That's a cool name, Jessly. Yeah, I love Jessly. How often do you visit Cobleskill and surrounding areas? Cobleskill is the uh, the the big town, which uh, like where there's a grocery store and a Walmart and like all the fast food chains. It's about twelve miles away. Um, she said, "What do you usually do while you're there?" Oh, she, here she says, um, "I hope to meet you someday soon." I wussed out when I saw you guys at Agway and Cobleskill. Why would you wuss out when you saw us? Yeah, don't wuss out. We're, we're just oh my god, we're, we were, we're folksy. We were, uh, I hope it wasn't just this past week because we were. Um, Agway, for those who don't know, is like a, uh, the local farm, a farm, su farm supply store. Supplies in garden store. So we went in, but we, we were at a funeral immediately before. So it was really awkward to walk into your local farm supply store in, in tie and blazers. Suit, dark suit, tie and blazers. I'm sure people we're, thought we were putting on airs. I know, I know. We're already so self-conscious when we go to town. Um, so so Cobleskill, um, we, we get to Cobleskill, not infrequently, because if no. we have to go to the drugstore or something like that, that's where we have to go. And there, the Cobleskill is really, it's doing, yeah, yeah there's I mean, a lot of new there's things. this, uh, uh, this great restaurant that opened in a tavern Bullshead called the tavern. Bullshead Inn. Also 1802. Built in 1802. So William Beekman, I'm sure ate there, yeah. but this, um, great couple have spent like the last two years renovating that old building. Um, and it's amazing. Yeah. And. Uh, we, 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 right there. I mean, we're in. We go to Cobleskill like once a month or so. We don't go there. We do, we yeah. don't go in very often because, like we said, we grow our, all our own food. We have milk. We have eggs. We have vegetables. We have uh, meat from the neighbors. So we really very rarely and, go. And what I love, and right beside where the Bull's Head Tavern is, is the um, the Palace Theater, which is a really old movie theater. It has one screen, and it still has like this, you know, the stadium seating. Um, and when you go in. There really are not a lot of options at the concession stand. There are no options. There's like a, a you can get a soda and a popcorn, and they both come in the same cup. You know, it's like a cup this big. It's a little wax Dixie cup with no ice. Uh, and uh, so your Coca Cola and your little thing of popcorn. It's very civilized. There's no like nine dollar popcorn and stuff. It's like a dollar, a dollar and a quarter. Um, and but they they always have like the latest release out right now is Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Um, but, uh, yeah, we right, you, you, okay, okay. I know, guess I know. so when I was talking, you should have found the next one, but you didn't but do I, then it. I was You're talking. not getting the process. Okay. Jane Pfeiffer okay. says, how do you both turn it off? Turn it off metaphorically, I guess. I get the impression, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, maybe that Brent has a hard time relaxing. I don't know where you <laughs> got that impression. Uh, you both must need time to recharge. I'd love to hear something about how you do that. Um, well, I don't know. Brent, Brent's a, Brent's a robot, so he doesn't really need to take time off or recharge or anything. Um, I, uh, I just go to the vegetable garden. If, if I can weed for an hour in the morning or pick something for an hour in the morning, that's, that's all I need. I love and sleep. Do you want to know something? People always say like, you guys don't sleep. We sleep plenty Yeah. because, um, you know, we, we go to bed soon after the sun goes down and we wake up when the sun comes up where we really do get an average of seven to nine hours of sleep every night. But when we're awake, we're not 
I, I, I'm so hard for me not to swear. We're not effing around. Um, we're always, you know, either working the garden or doing. So you know, this doing time of year, wrong. we just yeah. don't. We don't. This time of year, you know, when there's so much work in the gardens to be done, we will get up at around five or five thirty, and really go out and start working then, and work outside until we go into the mercantile uh, at ten. 10. And then we leave the mercantile usually around 530 and then we'll come back and work in the gardens until nine o'clock. Um, and that's, and then that's we how dinner. we get done. But and that, then we eat dinner and go to bed. And, but that's we don't how, watch TV. That, don't that's how we relieve our stress. You know, if, if we had a stressful day at work or something didn't work out right, you know, at work, we'll come and we kind of decompress by playing with Onder and I don't, I don't, know. I don't really know what else people well, people can do whatever they want to do. Well, people can do whatever they want to do, but I, I, I don't know what I would do if I had extra time. Like, I don't really like to go shopping much anymore. Mm -hmm. um, we don't go to movies. We don't watch TV. And honestly, and th so there's one day a week um, if we're in town that we do not go into the mercantile, and that Today. is Sundays. And and the reason Sundays is our quote unquote day off from the work of Beekman um, is that everybody else is not working on Sundays. And so that is the day when we have fewer, the fewest emails to answer. And so um, that is why Sundays is our day where we, we are it's just- hundred percent farm. hundred percent farm work. Um, so we love that. Okay, so Brooke Ratliff uh, asks, where can I watch the Beekman wedding? Oh, so you can actually you can go on Amazon and um, just search for the, Fabulous Speakman Boys Wonderful Wedding Special, I think it's. Mm -hmm. or, and you, know, it's it, Boys you can wedding. stream it right on Amazon, I believe. Um, oh, you got Prime. Oh, there's a hummingbird. And oh. um, yeah, so you can stream it and watch it live. I think that there's DVDs too, but you might as well just stream them. Okay, Tina Harris asks, uh, she says she was just in the Corning um, pop-up store, our summer pop-up store in Corning, New York, and she said it was great. Thanks, Tina, for visiting the pop-up. Corning is a fantastic little Corning's town. Corning's an amazing village. Um, she says, will there be more pop-up stores? Yeah. Uh, yep. The, the Corning pop-up store closes um, at the end of September, and then our holiday pop-up store this year is it's gonna in, be in Boston, in Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, Jesus, Brent, I didn't even see how bad my neck oh, was. Oh, you've got a gray chest hair. Just, what the? But, oh, um, God, the, uh, the cor uh, so we, um, uh, there's this amazing hotel in Boston called the Lenox Hotel. Um, this really old historic, one of those historic hotels of America. And um, they started using the Beekman products in their bath uh, amenities a few months ago. And um, they have a area off of their lobby, which is going to be the Beekman Holiday Pop-Up. So that Beekman Holiday Pop-Up will open October 14th in Boston, and it will be there until the end or first of January. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, okay, get your last minute questions in. Um, let's see. Seven minutes left. Oh, someone said, do you st Brent, do you still practice medicine and or do you miss medicine? Um, I do not practice. I've been out of medicine now for over a decade. Um, we practiced a lot and it just, just never got perfect. And you know, things change so much, but you know, I would not give up that experience for anything because when I love medicine, I love, you know, studying, I love science, you know, all of the beauty products and things, those are, you know, things that I work on and, and uh, help formulate. And so I really do love the science aspect of it. I love the prescriptions. Yeah, I don't write prescriptions anymore. No more prescriptions. Um, Lori Hay says the cheese of the month club can, um, is wonderful. I oh hope it yeah. Continues. Oh. Hey, how are we gonna, oh. how, this was my show. Okay, go. This is my show. You've okay. taken over the whole right, thing. I'm just. Okay, cheese of the month. I'm trying to figure out if anybody has any ideas because a lot of people liked different cheeses that we've had for the subscription. And I'm trying to figure out, how, you can't make them all available all the time. If there was anything in the cheese subscriptions that you guys really liked and want to order again, I guess just send us an email and we can figure out how to get you more of that. I don't want to repeat any, you know, anything that we've already sent because it's supposed to be new every month. If you don't know what this, uh, the uh, cheese of the month club is, uh, you can go on our shop. Um, it's uh, you get a surprise cheese every month from a oh. local small artisan that you can't get anywhere else. Oh, we've got some spam on here. I'm What's sorry, our spam? What's someone our... says Josh is so gorgeous. That's got to be spam. It's one of those, you know, like it's Viagra, a a Viagra, bot. Viagra spams. Um, Wait, what, you, what you went by it? I want to see it. Is uh, that all they said? Well, that was just so um, gorgeous. That's well, it. There's so it's there's right had to back be, here there now. had to be more. Well, it was so with like ten. 
O's on it. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm trying to get these in, guys. If Sorry. there are any, um, you know, uh, oh, so a uh, Karen McClellan uh, says you have so for sweet corn. Uh, Karen McClellan says you have so many goat milk products now. Do you use goat milk products from other farms? We do. Yes. Now we um, we have we use Farmer John has about 147 goats now, and that's the most goats that we can really have. We can't have more than 150 goats on the farm. So we, we have use 60 acres. That's the right amount of land um, to create the right amount of hay to get them to the winter. The barn holds that many, so we can't expand. Everyone always asks, we're going to have more goats. We are the perfect size of the farm. And rather than buy another farm and, and get more goats, which really we can't handle, um, we we work with other goat farmers. So yes, we use other goat farmers for the beauty products. We use goat milk um, from farms uh, actually around the country uh, in the beauty products. But the cheese uh, will always be Bigman. Mm -hmm. And the original goat milk soap. Oh, oh, I can't talk about it. Oh, there's something well, very, very exciting coming next year with cheese. Ooh. The chef for the oh I know I know we can't say, we can't yet, say but yet. Th yes Farmer John's gonna be very busy looking goats and Anne Marie D'Alfonso um, who some of you may know because she made one of our boutonnieres for um, yeah. year of the boutonniere and I don't know where she got this she said I'm all for 30 minutes on the farm each morning 30 minutes Anne Marie I think we said 15 we minutes should, maybe yeah we should do a, like a little morning news show from the thing we can get the headlines off of cnn and then offer commentary <laughs> yeah we're just as yeah we can we can do that it'll be like a, it'll be a literal farmer, live farm 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 farm, like, yeah. like comedy central except not funny <laughs> no you're very funny yeah, um nice. let's see okay okay i'm gonna we've got we've what, got time for why, like one why? more question it's, it's hard for me to read off i don't of know the why YouTube well, just make your window bigger you're so not tech savvy. No, but look, it doesn't make it bigger. Yes. How? Like this. It should be yeah, noted right that there, it's not right making it bigger. It is. It is. See, you do this. That went. Oh, that went. Josh, you do not look old. Josh, you look amazing. Oh, gosh. Josh, you're I'm so lo I'm gorgeous. loving this feed. Um, uh, Tracy Cleveland asked, how many goats do you lose a year? A year? Um, surprisingly, really few. I mean, Farmer John is such an amazing farmer, and everybody you know who has seen the fabulous speaking voice knows how much he loves those goats. I mean, we this is how th this is how much gen seven generations of yeah, one, one this month. is how spoiled the Beekman goats are. You know, we have all of this pasture oh, yeah. land for them to graze. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you. So you can see that, and all of that is pasture land right there. All of it. Do you see a single goat? No, there's not a single goat. Because, because they don't John, want to come out in the heat. John spoils the goat so much, he actually goes out into the field, cuts the grass, and brings it back into the barn for them to eat. So they our can goats, eat in the shade. Our goats are not free range because they won't, because John brings them their food every they, day. They free range from the tractor. <laughs> they free range laying down in the barn. Okay, oh my goodness. This is a big moment because we have to see what is going to be the very last question of the first annual International Spread the Plague Day. Okay. How do you know it's international? Well, I'm sure there are some people is it, watching if it, Is anybody overseas? If you're overseas, you can just put a note there. Okay, so what will be the last question? I'm, this is going to be hard to choose. Okay, let's see. There's one in all caps. It oh, well, that important. wasn't a question. That was a comment. Okay. Um, okay, hold on. Let me you're really... You're, he's not a good sidekick. I need, I need a producer. It's hard to do this and follow all through Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and... Have you been on? Did you go on YouTube? Was that what you were just? That on? was just on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, drum roll. What's going to be the last? The question? last question. Oh okay. Let me see. Well, you're, you can't read. Well, them. I'm going through. I'm trying to go through them systematically. Okay. Let's see. What should we have the title of the last question? Um. Do you see one that you want to do? What's that one? That. That's a comment. I can't, I can't read it. That, that's a comment. We'll just look here and and figure out what what needs work. Which do. You, yeah, it's like it's melting. The whole head is melting. Okay. Seven. I gotta it's get a, a mirror. It's so hard to read the comments off this YouTube. I need a mirror. Well, this wouldn't happen if I had a mirror. Oh. Okay. Well, no more questions. <laughs> Because it's six o'clock and everything was oh, going too this fast. Is the end but, of the question. Okay, so we want to say thank you, everybody, for spending uh, an hour of your Sunday afternoon. Andre with us. would particularly like to thank you okay, because Andrew. you distracted us enough yes, so that you can, you can actually her? sit on the Andrew. furniture. Andrew, look. Bye. I said bye, everybody. 
bye. That's, that's not what she sounds like. That's not her voice. But uh, so you know, we had a great time hanging out with you. Thanks for all the questions and um, you know, thanks for participating in the first annual international. Spread if you of still have day. questions, put them on Facebook, and we will try to. Uh, yeah, people always them. ask. This is a good way to end it. People always ask, "Do you guys run all of your social media?" Yes, and we can, no one else has the password to our social media accounts. And, and uh, generally, the only way you know if it's him responding or me responding is I generally don't use capital letters. So that's yeah, how he knows But um, we, we honestly do try to respond to as many questions on Facebook as possible. Um, you know, we can't always get to all of them. But if you do ask a question and it gets answered, you can guarantee that it was actually one of us who answered the question. So uh, we love interacting with you on social media. And, and if it was uh, a good answer, it was me. Yeah, probably. All right. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you later.